I want to provoke some thinking and some conversation. That's what I want to do. Uh huh? I want to provoke some thinking and some conversation tonight because we are going on in our studying of Psalms. And we're in Psalm 13. And uh, like I said, these Psalms deal with uh, David writing Psalms in a time of distress, in a time of being pursued, in a time of uncertainty, and in a time of when he felt his life was threatened. And he's writing these Psalms. And last week, Psalm 12, we dealt with help, Lord. He, the, the psalm started out with help, Lord. And now this song, uh, Psalm 13, deals, out, deals with how long. <laughs> and so what he wanted, he wanted, he wanted deliverance from those who were looking to take his life and from those who were looking to vex him in the kingdom. And he wanted God to deliver him and deliver them. And so he, he asked God, you know, well, Lord, when are you going to come through and do what we need you to do? And this is where uh, the trust that we have for God comes into play. The faith that we have in God comes into play. Uh, what do we do when God does not respond in the time that we feel we need him to respond? What do we do? What is our response? What is our complaint? Or what is, uh, what is the conversation about? If we ask God to do something and, specific, and the time is running out, my life is on the line, and Lord, I need you to do something. And I need you to do something fast. I need you to do something right now. And all of a sudden, heaven is silent. <laughs> What do we do? What do we do? Uh, and, and that's an important question because we can sit back and say what we think we will do, but until we're in that situation, we can't really say for sure what we'll do. That's why the scripture in the Bible is so important because the Bible tells us what we should do. It ain't saying that we're going to do it because we're not. if we get in that situation, then it would determine whether or not we're going to do it. But here's the thing about it. The Bible is there to train us as to what we should do. Well, this is where David is with the psalm, Psalm 13. He said, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? And that's in Psalm 2, Psalm 13, verse 2. In Psalm 13, verse 1, he says to the chief musician, a psalm of David, how long will thou forget me? How long, Lord? O oh Lord, forever, how long will thou hide thy face from me? And when, when we are under that kind of pressure, where we, where we feel it's life or death, uh, we're not looking for God at that time to be patient with us. We want God to, <laughs> to step in immediately and do what he want to do to help us make it. We try and survive. And this is what the psalmist wrote. And, he, and he, these songs, remember these psalms are songs of praise, songs of worship, songs of recognition that he need God in the most darkest times, in the hardest and most trying times he need God. So Psalm 13 verse 1 says, how long? And, you know, like I said, last week it was help, Lord. <laughs> Psalm 12, so I would help, Lord. Now, this week it starts out with, how long? I asked for the help. Now, how long before the help come? <laughs> That's important. Because it can impact us if we're really not dialed in to the way God does things. And I, and I say that over and over again. Because there are times when God will allow things to go on and on and on, and we think, well, by this time, this thing should be over. And God just let us kind of be in it for a while. And what God is trying to do, remember, he's trying to prove us to us. He's trying to show us how much faith we're working with, how really mature and how strong we are in the spirit. Because there are times we think that 
we are living above where we are. Well, I have never do that. And we say these things, and then something comes that challenges us to the point of death. And then we come like David, how long, Lord? <laughs> how long? How long will you hide your face from me? Psalm 1 verse, Psalm 13 verse 1. Verse 2 says, how long shall I take counsel in my soul? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? Having sorrow in my heart daily. I'm, from day to day, this thing grieves me. And I haven't got a response from you. I know I'm your child. I know you love me. I know you ordain me to do other things. But right now, this thing, how long? Now, we just read for our scripture for the year 2023 in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, where Jesus told the apostle Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. What happens a lot of time with God, and I've learned this over the years, is we'll ask God to do something for someone else. We'll intercede on behalf of someone else, and God will answer that and do that. But then we'll ask God for something for ourselves, and it's like, how long? <laughs> that, that's what I've noticed through the years, because God will always use our requests as a teaching moment because he wants to perfect us. So we go back to Psalm 13, verse 2. How long should I take counsel in my soul? I'm waiting on you, Lord. Having sorrow in my heart daily, how long shall my enemy be exalted over me? He wasn't exaggerating. He was assessing what was going on with him and around him. And he asked the Lord, how long before you step in and you save me from all this is that coming on me? And then verse 3 says, consider and hear me, O Lord. Psalm 13, verse 3. Consider and hear me, O Lord. My God, light my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Let me see what's going to be. Otherwise, I might end up just leaving here. I might end up leaving here. I need to know that you're there to protect me, Lord. How long before you let me know when you're going to do this? And if we ever had people that pursued us, to the point of being adversarial, to the point of wanting to take our life, then we can understand and relate more to what he's talking about. But if we have never experienced a person wanting to take our life purposefully, then we won't, we won't, we won't, we will hear it and read it as scripture, but the connection won't be there because the simple fact of the matter is what he went through, we are not going through or we haven't been through. We haven't been through a point where people were purposely trying to kill this man and he was God's anointed. And he asked God to protect him. And last week was, oh, Lord, this week is how long? This psalm contains the emotions of an afflicted soul that earnestly desires relief or support from the Lord. He, he, he desires it. He wants God to help him. Then it says, the psalmist complains of delay. God's not moving fast enough. <laughs> but do we not know and understand that God's not on our schedule? <laughs> We're on his schedule. We forget that sometimes. And we say, Lord, you're not moving fast. No, we're on his schedule. Psalm 13, verse 4. Say, lest my enemies say, I prevail against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. In other words, my enemies going to look at my dilemma, and they're going to think they won. And <laughs> we 
we really don't know the hand and the move of God until we have our enemies look at us thinking that they've defeated us. And God says it's not over. But it looks like it's over. And we feel like it's over because we're not hearing from God. He said, your enemy going to say, I prevail against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. In other words, when I am troubled, they rejoice because this is happening to me. You know, the old, uh, there was an old Martin Salt little saying on a, on a little salt that we used to buy. When it rains, it pours. And the salt was coming out the... Girl had the umbrella? Yeah, it's dropped. When it rains, it pours. It says, my enemy going to think that they've won. Because, Lord, you haven't did anything to help me through this. And that's where the adversary misses it. Because God is saying, I'm going to get as much out of this issue as possible. I'm going to help them mature. I'm going to help them build their faith. I'm going to help them grow. And I'm going to defeat you. All with this one issue, God said, I'm going to squeeze as much out of this issue. Now, he, he or she going to hurt for a little while. They're going to grieve for a little while. But at the end of the day, they're going to have, they're going to have so much love and so much appreciation for me. They're going to grow. They're going to mature. They're going to be stronger. And you will be defeated. Psalm 13, verse 5 says, But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. And he said, Lord, I'm trusting in you. And the way it works with God is when you really have sold yourself out to the Lord and given everything you have to the Lord, there is no other option. There's no alternative route. <laughs> you can't say, you're stuck with God. Amen. You're stuck with God. You, you, there's, no, there's nothing else that we can turn to that we have an assurance that it's going to respond. You're stuck with God. We have our education. I tried that when I got laid off. Uh, a little education. I'm going around. I knew I qualified for a job, whatever. Nobody hired me. I was still saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, but I was stuck with God. And I was stuck with God's plan for my life. And all these people did not hire me. And then I went and took the test to join the Air Force. And the Air Force said, come on in, son. We can use you. Thank you, Jesus. He said, come on in, son. I said, well, I don't know this. Thing. He said, don't worry about it. We'll teach it to you. But we can use you. And they invited me in to their community. And some, I don't know, 37, 38 years later, I'm still benefiting from being a part of the Air Force community. Amen. How long? Am I willing or are we willing to let God have us wait for the better thing and not settle for the lesser thing? 